Today we're representing functions. So a linear function is a graph who has a straight line, hence the word line in linear. Okay, so if we look at this graph, it has to be a straight line. We can represent it with equations, tables, and graphs. Or we can even describe it telling a story from a given situation. Okay, so we have to think back to our function rules. We have to first write a rule from the table. I like to always start at zero, and I would suggest you do the same. Even though we might run out of room, I'm going to do it like this. And then I know that when the input is one, my output is nine, 18, 27 for three, and 45, oh, excuse me, 36 for four, and 45 for five. Okay, so I know that my repeated addition is nine. Every single time I'm adding nine. So when I plug in a one, I get a nine. When I plug in a two, I get an 18. So when, if I go back nine, I'm at zero. So I know if it's repeated addition, that the function rule is y equals nine times x. Because every time I input one of these, it spits out an additional nine. And repeated addition is the same thing as multiplication. So originally, we just said the function rule is 9x. Now we say y equals 9x because the input is the x and the output is the y. So 9 times 0, 9 times 1, and so on and so forth to give us our outputs. Okay, so now if we needed to do this one, again, always start at 0. I don't even need the fifth one because I should be able to find the pattern from here. Okay, what do I notice that is happening on these? I'm increasing by a total of 16 every single time. So if I go back 16, I'm back at zero. What do you think then is the function rule? Go ahead and take a second and think about it. Okay, hopefully you realized that with repeated addition, that's the same thing as multiplication. So our function rule is y equals 16x. If I plug in 0, I get 0. If I plug in 1, I get 16. If I plug in 2, I get 32. And so on with 48 for 3 and for 4, 64. Okay, so what if they ask us to graph it? Okay, well, we need to start with any inputs that we like. I always, again, start with zero and then go up from there. So I'm going to plug in for 2x, 2 times 0, 2 times 1, and so on and so forth. And then I'm going to solve. 2 times 0 is 0. So when my input is 0, my output is 0. We're going to write it with the x the input as the first coordinate and the zero as the second. So when we have a coordinate pair, we plot it on the coordinate grid. Okay, so when one is the input, the output is two. So plug in one and two. So my input is one, my output is two. My input is two, my output is four. Okay, so I'm plotting this one, two, four. My input is three, my output is six. So three, six. My input is four, my output is eight. So four comma eight. So from each and every one of these, we create coordinate pairs. Your input or your independent variable is always along the x-axis. And your output, or your dependent variable, is always along the y-axis. Then we're going to graph it with a straight line. It starts at the origin, and it crosses through at each of these points. All right, so I want you to take a second, and I want you to try to graph this. The input, or the IV, is x. So let's start with 0. One, two, three, and four. Go ahead and try this, pause the video, and I'll be back in just a second to show you what I did. Okay, so zero plus three is three, so this would be zero comma three. Zero plus one, or excuse me, one plus three, I don't know what I was doing there. One plus three is four, so one comma four. 
2 plus 3 is 5, so 2 comma 5, and so on and so forth. So 3 comma 6, and this one would be 7, so 4 comma 7. Now let's plot them. At 0, it's not at the origin anymore. It's at 3 on the y-axis. 1 is at 4, 2 is at 5, 3 is at 6, and do you notice that eventually I'm going to form a pattern that I could keep going? That's the point. We want to find a pattern that could be used for the rest of the graph. Oops, undo that, and let's straighten that out a little bit. Oops, didn't want to undo both of those things. Okay, and let's straighten out our line a little bit so it passes through at each appropriate point. Okay, so what if we have an equation and it's a, given from a situation? Let's look at something that's real world, like this one. The school cafeteria sells lunch passes that allow students to purchase any number of lunches in advance for $3 per lunch. Write an equation to find T, the total cost, to purchase a pass for N number of lunches. And then make a table to graph um, to graph and represent the situation. So this is your X and this is your Y. So $3 per lunch, so three times the number of lunches will give you your Y. So Y equals three X. So if I don't buy any, then I pay nothing because three times zero gives me zero. If I buy one, I would pay $3. If I buy two, I would pay six dollars if I buy three and so on and so forth so if I want to write these as coordinate points zero comma zero one comma three two comma six three nine and four twelve now let's plot it I am start at the origin because if you buy nothing you get nothing okay at one, I'm paying three dollars because this would be my money and these would be the number of lunches. If it's a situation, we need to make sure that we have some labels. For two, you would pay six. For three, nine. And even if it's off the graph, that's okay. We don't need to plot anymore. We need to just represent it with an arrow. Okay, because this arrow means it's going on forever. Okay, so this is your chance to try this one. I want you to go through and I want you to think what this means. Mari receives $3 per week and an additional $1.75 for each chore he completes. Write an equation to find T, the total allowance he earns after completing C chores in one week. Then make a table. So $3 per week with an additional $1.75 to start. Think about what, you, what the equation would be first. Okay, in this case, the equation would be 3x for the $3 per week, and hopefully you also got $1.75. Okay, if you didn't get that, go back and fix your work. Okay, so now plug in your variables, or excuse me, your inputs. So I know... Okay, so on this one, we plug in 0 for x, 1, 2, 3, and 4 for x, and we would get $4.75. Oh, excuse me, just again, kidding, that's the next one. $1.75, $4.75, $7.75, so $10.75, 0 equals $1.75 would be my coordinate pair, and so on and so forth. Okay, now, if you do no chores, you already had $1.75, so you make your dot. If you do one chore, you make $4.75, so make your dot. Two chores would be $7.75, make your dot. And three would be a little bit over this, so at this point we no longer have any room to graph, and we don't want our arrow pointing that way. Whoops, Daisy. We want it pointing this direction. 
and being continuous <clears throat> with that arrow at the end shows us that this is not ending, that even though we can't see it, it keeps going with the number of chores that we do. And that's all I have for you today. See you in